Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jake Jabarelli of Jabarelli.com. Just a bunch of referral links. Today, I'll be talking about how to install Docker on Windows 10 Home. Now, maybe you're asking yourself, what is Docker and why would I want it? Well, um, it's the cheapest way to get XM rig up and running on your system without having Windows bark at you all the time. Now, if you don't have antivirus turned on on your Windows, or uh, you don't have any antivirus at all, maybe Windows won't get on your case. But I know when I've tried to install XM rig, even Chrome won't let me download it because I mean, it's not that XM rig is bad. It's not. It's a mining software, but it's uh, it's kind of looked down upon by the general, uh, you know digital community out there. I'm not talking about miners themselves, but people who were basically abused. You know, XM Rig looks like an abuse of software. It's not, if you know what it is and you know what it's used for, but if you're not certain of what it is, then you might be taken advantage of when you're using it. And so people got upset and they basically tried to make it look like spyware or, any, or a virus or something. It's not a virus. Now, it's not to say there haven't been people out there who have abused it. And that might be the very reason why Google and Microsoft are trying to keep you from using it. Well, if you run it in Docker, you're not technically running it on Windows. So, get around. So, what is Docker? I'm just summing it up very simply. Instead of having to build a whole other computer, or without, instead of having to run a virtual machine, and then you know, Linux on that with Docker, you're just running the application. It's kind of like it, kind of like an emulator. It's not really an emulator, but it's kind of like an emulator to the application that you want to run. And it gives you a lot of options. I'm only going to talk about how to run XM Rig to do Kiva coin mining on Docker. There's so many other possibilities that I can't even fathom how much there is. There's probably hundreds of thousands of possibilities, probably more than that. Just get, just giving an idea. So Step one, to install Docker desktop on Windows Home. Make sure that your Windows desktop version or laptop version is up to date. If you're not running at least version 1903 of Windows or higher, you're going to need to update. Most people, I think with Windows 10, are being forced to update, so you probably already have something newer than this. 1903 or higher. Okay. You need to enable WSL2. I'll get to that in a second. You need to have a 64-bit processor with this capability, the second level address translation. You need to have at least 4 gigs of RAM, and you need to have virtualization turned on in the BIOS. Most likely it already is, but if it isn't, you can always reboot your computer, hit delete or F2 as many times as you can to turn it on, and then set it and reboot. In any case, there's a couple of little prerequisites. These probably are already met for you most likely unless you're running on a really old computer. Yeah, this is for Windows 10 anyways, you probably have all this stuff. So the second step is WSL2 backend. That would be this link right here. I'll provide this link also in the description. So Docker desktop WSL2 background, uh, backend, the grand they do show you these prerequisites. And I'm gonna go into the Microsoft documentation in, a, in order to do a manual install because anything else seems to require a subscription that. So, manual steps, um, which the link is also here. You can check out on this. Um, and actually, if you just go to the top here, you'll see it's either simplified install or manual. I'm doing manual because I don't want to have to sign up for the Windows Insider program. So, manual install. Uh, you'll want to open a uh, PowerShell window, and you want to literally copy this little line here, paste it in here, and hit run. It'll run a simple update. Second, um, you want to check, if they say check requirements, um, obviously update latest version. Um, then you can go down here and enable the virtual machine feature. Again, copy this line, that copy button, and pasting it in here and running that, that command. Then you'll want to download this application and run it. And at that point, I believe uh, Windows will probably make you re reboot your computer. And then when you get rebooted and get back into the system, you'll do, oops, you'll do all that. copy this, again, run it in PowerShell. You'll make sure when you run PowerShell, you run it in admin version. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, type in, you know, Windows key here, type in, uh, um, 
PowerShell, and then it'll give you the option to just run it or run it as administrator. Run as administrator, say yes, you're in. Okay, no problems. So once you get these these steps, all these things I just showed, I mean, those are the step by step. You could have followed it yourself. I'm just trying to help people out. Um, once that's done, we're going to get, we're going to go back to here and download Docker. Download the Docker Hub uh, application, which you can see down here, um, and run it. And now they will have a, a setup tutorial to show you how to basically create your first container and they have an instruction manual and go through that. I do recommend that since if you're watching this and you've never done Docker before, I mean if you have, you'll skip to the end. But if you haven't and you want to do want to learn about how Docker works and the container concept, I do highly recommend that you check out the little um, you know how to. Don't skip the tutorial, just go through it. It shouldn't take more than five to ten minutes assuming that you comprehend everything they tell you. It's not super complicated. It really is, it seems technically fuzzy, but it's it's not really a complicated concept. I mean, dockerization or dockerizing things is a really cool like feature to have available to you. Okay, so I'm skipping the tutorial, but I highly recommend that you check it out and I'll show you what, at least what it looks like here. You'll have um, a, a, I think it's called the uh, you know, name of your system, and then the Docker 101 tutorial, and then you can run it, and it'll show up here as a as a, as a container. So once you get all that, you'll go back to PowerShell, and you will run. This is what I love about this so much. You don't have to download. Anything. Well, you, you do download, but you don't have to install anything. It just becomes a doc a, a container. This guy wrote this application, this this uh, Metal 3D guy. And he, of course, wrote it so he can mine Monero, but we're going to be doing Cavacoin. And uh, you literally just run this command. So I can copy it here, copy that, go back to my PowerShell, paste it in, and run it. I'm not going to run it because I already have something else running. But um, you run this, it downloads the image. Now, what I would suggest after you run this is because it's going to start mining to his account. Hit Control C, cancel that out. So it stops it, or even if you can't at that point, you can always go in here and just hit the stop button on on the uh, container. Now this is the part that is a little more tricky, and I think I already have it set up for myself, so you guys can see what I have. So I'm using um, my own wallet on my phone, but there are places you can you can keep your wallet. You, like I think uh, Hotbit has wallets. Now, I don't think they really want you mining to their wallet because they don't want small amounts of Kiva coin coming in. But um, if you just set up the Kiva coin wallet, very simple download, iOS or Android works on both. Um, then you can basically set up, I'm using uh, Hero Miners. It's not the largest pool out there, but it is a pretty pretty large pool. Um, the largest thing is something in China, I think it's DX pool. So Docker run and then this is an environment variable. If you've done any mining at all, you'll probably see this is familiar. So I write epool equals CA, which is Canada, kivacoin.herominus.com slash this or colon this address. You can literally just copy this stuff. I can actually put it in the description. You guys can copy. This is my <laughs> um, address. I welcome you. If you wish to give me a coin, you can totally mine to me, but uh, I would encourage you to mine to your own address. <laughs> so please get your own address. Um, that's the pool user. That's the, the uh, username in this. And then the pass in this case is just the name of my computer. You can literally put nothing or you can put something. It doesn't matter. Um, I put donate. This is the percentage. I put 1% uh, donating to uh, the, the people who created XM Rig. You have to make sure you specif specify the algorithm. In this place, it's Kiva coin, so you say algo equals rx slash Kiva. Otherwise, it'll just mine Monero and it won't work. Now, I set the priority to zero because I don't want uh, I want this this container to be running all the time. And when I'm making a video, I don't want it to be interrupting my video. So I set it to zero. So basically, when I'm not touching my computer, I'll leave it on and it continues to mine. Now, if you turn your computer off, it's not going to work, but uh, as long as you're not using your computer and you leave it on, the thing will just start mining. And then the last little bit here is just his original code. Name, miner, dash, dash, rm, dash, it, and the name of the container. Fairly simple to do. Like I said, 
I would say, I mean, I've only spent 10 minutes telling you all this information so far, and yes, there's more to it than just what I've shown, but it's not really complicated. And like, I'm, you guys, if you've been following me for any length of time, I'm perfectly happy to ask, answer any questions about this. Um, if you need more explanation, I'm happy to give you more information. Um, if you want to email me, my email is on my page. It's jabberelli at tech.me. I don't mind giving this out. People, have, Plenty of people have emailed me over the, over the time I've been a YouTube creator. Um, I want to help people learn how to do this stuff. But yes, I am making money at this. But um, the whole point of this tutorial is to give you help in figuring out how to mine for yourself without having Windows interfere. And then, of course, the advantage of using containerized images is that you can move them around. You can totally pick up this image and put it on another computer and just start from wherever you were before. Um, and the other thing is you can keep multiple images. So you could have a one image for mining Kiva. You could have an image for mining Monero. You could have a bunch of images for a bunch of different things. You could just run them into plumbing, or you can just run them sequentially. I mean, there's so many different options. So, um, and in fact, it's not just for this. This is just one example of a containerized program. There's so many possibilities to use Docker for. So, um, if you guys have any questions, please leave me a comment, or you can, as I said before, email me. Um, I know this is kind of a simplified overview, but I just want to get the idea out there. I know I had some people asking questions about this, and like I said, more questions, please drop me a line. Um, thanks for watching. I, I really appreciate you guys asking me the question because it gives me more reasons to write content. So uh, if you have another question about Docker or some other application you want me to see me run, please comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.